O oh, rare Ben Jonson, we read on his stone. This prolific Renaissance writer, second only to Shakespeare, led an unusual life and had an even more unusual burial. In 17th century England, Jonson was a bricklayer and a soldier before he became an actor, playwright and poet. A highly learned man, he was educated at Westminster School, at that time part of Westminster Abbey, with his place being paid for by one of the teachers. He was popular with the royal family and in 1619 assumed the responsibilities as England's first poet laureate, although it was not at that time a formal appointment. Professionally, he was revered for writing satirical comedies, poems and masks, a form of courtly entertainment. His personal reputation, on the other hand, was something else. He was a troublemaker who in 1598 killed a fellow actor in a duel. While he did spend time in prison, during which he converted to Catholicism, he escaped capital punishment by pleading benefit of clergy, highlighting his ability to read from the Latin Bible. Despite numerous gifts from royalty, he always seemed to be poor and died in poverty in 1637. Which is why, when it came to burying him at Westminster Abbey, he is the only person buried in an upright position. Some say he negotiated two feet by two feet with the then Dean of Westminster, while others say Johnson begged King Charles I for 18 inches of square ground. Either way, Johnson was buried standing upright in the nave rather than Poet's Corner. In the 19th century, his grave was accidentally disturbed, with staff reporting that they saw his skull, still with some red hair attached to it, come rolling down from above his leg bones. It only took a hundred years for a monument to be added to Poet's Corner, celebrating this larger-than-life character. But beneath the bravado was a man, a father, and one who used the outlet of poetry to try and comprehend the loss of his seven-year-old son. Perhaps this is the closest we get to the real Ben Johnson. Farewell, thou child of my right hand and joy. My sin was too much hope of thee, loved boy. Seven years, O word, lent to me, and I thee pay, exacted by thy fate on the just day. O oh, could I lose, or father, now? For why will man lament the state he should envy, to have so soon scaped worlds and flesh's rage, and if no other misery, yet age? Rest in soft peace, and ask, say, here doth lie Ben Jonson, his best piece of poetry. For whose sake henceforth all his vows be such as what he loves may never like too much.